Jet engines date back to the invention of the Eolipile before the 1st century AD. This device directed steam power through two nozzles to cause a sphere to spin rapidly on its axis. So far as is known, it did not supply mechanical power and the potential practical applications of this invention did not receive recognition. Instead, it was seen as a curiosity. Jet propulsion only gained practical applications with the invention of the gunpowder-powered rocket by the Chinese in the 13th century as a type of firework, and gradually progressed to propel formidable weaponry. However, although very powerful, at reasonable flight speeds rockets are very inefficient and so jet propulsion technology stalled for hundreds of years. The earliest attempts at air-breathing jet engines were hybrid designs in which an external power source first compressed air, which was then mixed with fuel and burned for jet thrust. In one such system, called a thermojet by Secondo Campini but more commonly, motorhut, the air was compressed by a fan driven by a conventional piston engine. Examples of this type of design were the Caproni Campini N. 1, and the Japanese Tsu 11 engine intended to power Oakamikaze planes towards the end of World War II. None were entirely successful and the N. 1 ended up being slower than the same design with a traditional engine and propeller combination. Even before the start of World War II, engineers were beginning to realize that engines driving propellers were self-limiting in terms of the maximum performance which could be attained, the limit was due to issues related to propeller efficiency, which declined as blade tips approached the speed of sound. If aircraft performance were ever to increase beyond such a barrier, a way would have to be found to use a different propulsion mechanism. This was the motivation behind the development of the gas turbine engine, commonly called a jet engine. The key to a practical jet engine was the gas turbine, used to extract energy from the engine itself to drive the compressor. The gas turbine was not an idea developed in the 1930s, the patent for a stationary turbine was granted to John Barber in England in 1791. The first gas turbine to successfully run self-sustaining was built in 1903 by Norwegian engineer Egidius Elling. Limitations in design and practical engineering and metallurgy prevented such engines reaching manufacture. The main problems were safety, reliability, weight and, especially, sustained operation. The first patent for using a gas turbine to power an aircraft was filed in 1921 by Frenchman Maxime Guillaume. His engine was an axial flow turbojet. Alan Arnold Griffith published an aerodynamic theory of turbine design in 1926 leading to experimental work at the Ray. In 1928, RAF College Cranwell Cadet 5 Frank Whittle formally submitted his ideas for a turbojet to his superiors. In October 1929 he developed his ideas further. 6 On January 16, 1930 in England, Whittle submitted his first patent, granted in 1932. 7. The patent showed a two-stage axial compressor feeding a single-sided centrifugal compressor. Practical axial compressors were made possible by ideas from A. A. Griffith in a seminal paper in 1926, An Aerodynamic Theory of Turbine Design. Whittle would later concentrate on the simpler centrifugal compressor only, for a variety of practical reasons. Whittle had his first engine running in April 1937. It was liquid-fueled, and included a self-contained fuel pump. Whittle's team experienced near panic when the engine would not stop, accelerating even after the fuel was switched off. It turned out that fuel had leaked into the engine and accumulated in pools, so the engine would not stop until all the leaked fuel had burned off. Whittle was unable to interest the government in his invention, and development continued at a slow pace. In 1935 Hans von Ahain started work on a similar design in Germany, initially unaware of Whittle's work. Von Ahain's first device was strictly experimental and could run only under external power, but he was able to demonstrate the basic concept. Ahain was then introduced to Ernst Heinkel, one of the larger aircraft industrialists of the day, who immediately saw the promise of the design. Heinkel had recently purchased the Hearth Engine Company and Ahain and his master machinist Max Hahn were set up there as a new division of the Hearth Company. They had their first HES-1 centrifugal engine running by September 1937. Unlike Whittle's design, 
Ahain used hydrogen as fuel, supplied under external pressure. Their subsequent designs culminated in the gasoline-fueled HES 3 of 5 knots, 1,100 lbf, which was fitted to Heinkel's simple and compact He 178 airframe and flown by Eric Warzitz in the early morning of August 27, 1939, from Rostock Marina He Aerodrome, an impressively short time for development. The He 178 was the world's first jet plane. Austrian Anselm Franz of Junkers Engine Division, Junkers Motoren or Jumo, introduced the axial flow compressor in their jet engine. Jumo was assigned the next engine number in the RLM 109-0XX numbering sequence for gas turbine aircraft power plants, 004, and the result was the Jumo 004 engine. After many lesser technical difficulties were solved, mass production of this engine started in 1944 as a power plant for the world's first jet fighter aircraft, the Messerschmitt Me 262, and later the world's first jet bomber aircraft the Arado AR-234. A variety of reasons conspired to delay the engine's availability, causing the fighter to arrive too late to improve Germany's position in World War II, however this was the first jet engine to be used in service. Meanwhile, in Britain the Gloucester E-28-39 had its maiden flight on May 15, 1941 and the Gloucester Meteor finally entered service with the RAF in July 1944. These were powered by turbojet engines from Power Jets Ltd. Set up by Frank Whittle. Following the end of the war the German jet aircraft and jet engines were extensively studied by the victorious Allies and contributed to work on early Soviet and US jet fighters. The legacy of the axial flow engine is seen in the fact that practically all jet engines on fixed-wing aircraft have had some inspiration from this design. By the 1950s the jet engine was almost universal in combat aircraft, with the exception of cargo, liaison, and other specialty types. By this point some of the British designs were already cleared for civilian use, and had appeared on early models like the de Havilland Comet and Avro Canada jetliner. By the 1960s all large civilian aircraft were also jet-powered, leaving the piston engine in low-cost niche roles such as cargo flights. The efficiency of turbojet engines was still rather worse than piston engines, but by the 1970s, with the advent of high-bypass turbofan jet engines, an innovation not foreseen by the early commentators such as Edgar Buckingham, at high speeds and high altitudes that seemed absurd to them, fuel efficiency was about the same as the best piston and propeller engines.